is the No Old Bar Witchcraft podcast, and Chris has been apparently what doing some sort of a, well, I do hope it wasn't a workshop, but uh, some sort of education ins education on a sexy time. Is that what's been going on? What's been going on? I hear stories. I wasn't. I wasn't delivering sex ed. That no sex like... education. I thought it was an educational talk or a workshop on something to do with sexy times. No, I at our moot this week um, because we were trying to be good in January and we uh, planned for the year a set of topics, which we never do. It's normally thrown Mm. together last minute before, um, as a lot of moots are, I think. Um, You have like a, a loose idea. Anyway... I thought that they would enjoy a session on sex magic. And I was thought... Was it a workshop? Did they have to swap biologicals or not? No, it Did wasn't Did you do it the Wiccan way, purely symbolic-like? It wasn't an orgy. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. But it was... Um, the reason I kind of thought it'd be nice to do it this week is because traditionally um, this one, because we, we the last the last week of the month um oh. we kind of thought oh well this will be the closest one to beltane oh. and obviously because there are some of them in there that they're not wiccan but they do kind of follow the seasonal change of the year well beltane is obviously one of the only ones i will tolerate um because i'm i'm not a huge fan of the wheel of the year i think it's a you know really shit approach because it actually doesn't really reflect modern day yeah. or even ancient world day yeah. in, this, in the same way that it uh, tries to emulate. So I just, I find it really frustrating, but the only ones I will make any effort for are Beltane and, and obviously our other favourite one, which is... Um, October. Samhain. Which they generally um, just call Samhain. So like... Or Samhain, so yeah. if it's supernatural. <laughs> uh, fucking morons. Um, so yeah, so I I kind of thought you know fire festival, sex magic, the two kind of go hand in hand, don't they? Well, one should think that it would be fiery, you know. At least so, on the evening, maybe not the following day when you've got the itch. Rude. <laughs> you don't want that sort of fire. A fiery itch. <laughs> From the night before. <laughs> so, yeah, so I thought I thought it might be nice. Um, and obviously Beltane is also a kind of fertility um, kind of ritual. So that kind of made sense that, you know, uh, Maeve and all that, um, Mary of the Oak King and all that kind of crap. Um, you kind of got that nice thing of, well, OK, let's rebrand it, sex magic. Let's go. So what we did earlier on in the year, uh, which I think is what a moot should do, um, is we kind of, I posed a question and asked all of them to kind of give their experiences of um, before, because then that way you've got an idea of how much you need to lay it on, um, depending on how well they did it. And I'd written a little list before I went in of like topic points that I was, get, you know, interested, thought might would work. Um, and actually they hit about half the list. I was quite impressed actually. Um, bearing in mind, most of them hadn't really done any sex magic of any kind. Oh. So it was nice to know that they at least had in their consciousness thought about it. So I'll pose the question to you, Liam, because um, this is how I kind of asked them. So I kind of went in my line of work. (laughs) um, I get lots of people conflate love and sex as being the same thing um, or at least too close to one another. I said, so if I was to ask you, what is your understanding of love and sex magic and how different are the two? Well, love's a word that's descript, uh, descriptive language of some sort of an emotion. 
Yeah. <laughs> and then the other one there's involved in some form of penetration. Oh, okay. Basically. Okay. So yeah, so I kind of asked them then to kind of expand and kind of talk about any things that they would think of in terms of what they considered sex magic to be. Mm. Uh, and we had the kind of typical ones. Um, they obviously had some thoughts about biologicals, um, mm. kind of sex magic as in kind of attraction magic. Mm. Uh, even had one talk about the idea of kind of self-love um, and kind of, you know, love magic could potentially be, um, you know, the magic that's given in protection of loved ones, um, that sort of thing of kind of like that unintentional love magic. What is this, a family circle jerk or something? <laughs> very, very, Harry, very Harry Potter, um, right. self-sacrifice and all that kind of shit. Come on, Harry, rub the one. <laughs> I can <smell> the animals. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, we were all thinking that. Trish needs to be standard. Oh. So um, did the talk go well? Yeah, it was good. And obviously we got so... What I liked most was we got so distracted by each other, talking about each other's experiences. Mm. Um. And one of them talked about kind of like accidental kind of sex magic. Oh, as premature in, sex magic. No, not premature sex. Ad, oh. like as in um, when something that should have was mundane became mm. magical on the oh. basis that multiple people there were practitioners. So that oh, kind of right. like, um, um, he particularly was talking about when once upon a time it was part of a thruple um and they'd gone out and about mm. um that sort of thing is occurring and then kind of like you know as quite frequently happens which i don't think he realized this is quite free you know is quite normal is um animals got closer so you know mm. kind of waking up to uh you know a deer nibbling at your nether regions is pretty standard for when you go and have, um, you know, sex magic in, in the woods. Um, because the animals f feel that energy of um, that kind of mating call kind of mm. way of approach. So it was quite interesting to kind of go, well, actually, that's not the first time I've heard someone talk about that. Mm. Um, that's quite common, or at least my understanding of that is quite common. Um you know, all the animals arriving at the orgy afterwards kind of thing. Mm. Um, thankfully, not during, um, but mm. kind of afterwards, because that kind of energy raises a certain kind of vibrant frequency around the space and kind of attracts those kind of things. Um, but yeah, it was it was really it was really nice to kind of hear their experiences and actually like I said, even though they'd not done a lot of intentional sex magic, um, it was interesting to hear what their what their ponderings were. Um, oh, okay. So what were some of the more, more bizarre, unusual ones then that you remember? Uh, or is it were, just generic spell casting or consumption uh, or something? Yeah, they were all quite they were all quite generic. And then people had kind of brought up other subjects that they didn't really know a lot about. So the natural one is obviously like what this podcast is named after. The, um, you know, there was mention of the Great Rite. Someone mm. had got a copy of the Farrars with them. Um, and they were kind of, you know, flicking to the pages at the back around the kind of Great Rite um, and kind of describing the expression, the difference of expression between kind of the symbolic you know him putting his athame into her chalice that sort of thing oh. versus the actual act um oh. and we had a bit of a chat about covens and particularly the alexandrian ones um and that kind of actual performance of the great right oh. um so what well, they were quite surprised to hear because obviously that's their understanding of the great right um 
and they don't know a massive amount about its classical leaning. Mm. So obviously for them, it was kind of like, oh, yeah, it's just about um, the coming together of masculine and feminine. Mm. Um, the kind of a very kind of Wiccan answer, but yeah. not realizing it was a Wiccan answer. Um, That's because a lot of these Wiccans don't realize they're Wiccans because all they are exposed to witchcraft wise is Wicca. So they just think that that is witchcraft, but yeah. they know not experiencing other flavors. Oh. Like they don't know about anal, the people that just do the vanilla, you know? I suppose. So yeah, so it's just kind of like it was interesting um to see what their their understanding of it was. Because mm. obviously, as you're very aware, I do far too much sex magic, intentional and otherwise. Mm. Um so to me it's quite a yeah, regular part. Walking, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's quite a regular <laughs> it's quite a regular part of my practice. Um you know, being geared up the way that I am, like, means that um, a lot of the work I do is is kind of probably easily classified as kind of sex magic, which is done as a various a various kinds of healing magic, um, both for myself and others, mm. is done through that process, um, and not meaning kind of the other obvious ones, which was talking about things like tantric or mm. um talking about the karma sutra or or kundalini um and kind of talking about all those different different flavors of the same thing um which all have too much of a focus on masculine feminine um mm. and not in the way in which i approach it which is very different um but maybe more about that on the other other half um so yeah, so going back to the the great right, um, I was interested to see that actually they'd all got that kind of Wiccan understanding of it. Not that mm. they any of them had partaken in, um, or were even Wiccan necessarily, but that's kind of how the the knowledge about mystery cults mm. all comes from Uncle Uncle Gerald. Uncle Gerald, um, you know. So it was yeah. kind of interesting to hear that actually the majority of their knowledge about the great right is that mm. so talks about divine masculine and feminine coming together so they're not really aware of any of the real fertility cults mm. um so you know they'd heard of the bacchanalia but know nothing of it um they know nothing of, you know, the traditional great right, which would be the uh, the Denicia, um, which had um, huge festival games, big performing arts. Um, it's actually where a lot of our plays come from, from the ancient world, is the competitions that were held at that point are all part of honouring kind of, you know, either Dionysus or, or the version that I believe Gerald um uncle gerald is stealing is actually more the one to do with um not dionysus but actually kind of um artemis and action so which is actually a rape um not a consensual consensual sex situation mm. um so isn't a love and light um you know um hearty hearty valentine's -y kind of approach um you know it's coming well, to is that why in a lot of these wiccan circles it all gets a bit rapey and there are lots of cult leaders often i mean there's always ones being accused of pedophilia and sexual assault and such is there something there perhaps well you know? if that if that's what the energy they're chasing it's not surprising really is it but there is that kind of part of actually looking at the pictures in the farrah mm um they're in their book the pictures of their ritual mm. actually does have her bound yeah um so which makes me wonder um i've never really looked into it but it it had me thinking about well actually one of the versions of that cult would be um artemis and action 
Mm-hmm. So obviously, you know, she gets a he gets his comeuppance in the end when she turns him into a stag, and um, and then he's te- torn apart by his own hunting hounds. Um, mm-hmm. But they don't feel, you know, they don't do that bit. Um, no. They just, uh, they, it's all about the culmination, isn't it? It's about the mm-hmm. um, bringing together of divine masculine and feminine. Um, but it would explain why a lot of the kind of Wiccan Alexandrian, I can't mm. speak to the the other kind. Why won't my brain give me the other kind? Well, the kind of yeah. So the um, I don't know, I don't know the difference particularly because it doesn't interest me mainly um, mm. of of the you know symbolism that they're going for in the two. Um, but I can base on what the Fras have put out there from the kind of Alexandrian side. Um, and that often is a crown. He wears a crown that's got horns on, mm. which kind of gives the the hint towards, um, you know, all the Wiccans would like to say that's Therenos um, mm. from the Celtic, but it's not. Mm. Um, it has more to do with the possibility of bringing the representation of the stag mm. um, and the ultimate end of that partnership. Um, but yeah, the the kind of rapey aspect of it was very interesting from someone that has never practiced Mm. that version of the great right um so kind of knowing knowing that it kind of does does beg the question like you say how rapey was wicker Um, how rapey is it now i mean um, fucking hell you hear stories don't you and allegations being made and stuff um, I think a lot of it is getting very incredibly watered down because of, I think, partly, I've been told, the sheer amount of gays that are in the Wicca and all of that. Because you have a lot of this idea of, yeah, there's a sexual reunion and such between male and female, and they think about manifestation of babies and stuff and the evolution of the the old um, sex cult, essentially. But it seems to be a lot more like, oh, well, you don't have to do it. You do it all symbolically, you see. And I kind of, part of me thinks, wait a minute, the people that are that are waving blunt swords around, trying to cast things up with a blunt sword, that have never used a sword before, are also doing pretend sex rites with daggers <laughs> and cauldrons and whatever else. I mean, at what point, what, what point, do you turn around and say well actually this isn't really logical in terms of the way i want to work why don't we work in another dichotomy why don't we not do this kind of sexual union type of magic and let's instead do something else Mm. and it just makes little sense to me the only thing that i can think is that that is the only way they know how to do it because that's how someone else has made it 50 odd years ago and they can innovate i mean (laughs) It doesn't seem to be pushing past. It doesn't seem to be pushing past the old uh, kind of sex cult. Um, it, if anything, is actually regressing. Yeah, but I think part of that is that, and I'm I'm going to use the W word woke. Um, you know, the, a big part of a big part of that is this search for, and I hate it, authenticity. Mm. Um, and they seem to think that the best way to be authentic is to copy a way that somebody else did rather than actually finding their own authentic way of producing the the energy or the the configuration required. Well, and a lot they, of the time they're not educated and aren't taught about magic. They're just used in a lot of these cults they have their particularly with the wiccans and a lot of the neo-pagans in general they have initiatory grades don't they say so first degree second degree third degree whatever else and they're not taught they really aren't taught like the whole point of you attending a ritual is just to raise energy and connect in their little you know plug yourself into their little network and it's kind of like well that is very that's very untraditional <laughs> Like, I I know we often talk about the fact that actually it's it's about you know keeping them all dumb, um to make them keep them useful, but mm. also I think part of it breeds particularly for the in, insta witches, 
um, this stagnation of power because they only really experience magic when in a group um, mm, and, yeah. spend the, and spend the time between that being kind of dormant, mm. um, waiting yeah. for the next group ritual. They're all, um, they're all group. Uh, basically, all of the information that they get is evolved from a fertility cult that was group orientated. And yet the majority of practitioners call themselves solitary. Yeah. Just think about that for a second. Think yeah. about that for a second. So, but particularly when you're talking about something like the Great Rite, oh. which is about the coming together of mixing energies <coughs> um, in order to produce something new, um, mm. it's kind of interesting in that process of kind of going, actually, what does that mean for you? Because actually, you should both be arriving with your own power. Mm. It shouldn't only become something when there's multiple of you. Mm. You should be, you know, um, for lack of a better phrase, uh, looking after and tending to your own instruments in the meantime um, mm. until like, you know, it's almost like um, which was on my list and they hadn't considered um, this enforced con concept of celibacy. Yeah. Um, so obviously I was then talking about uh, botanicals as a power source and went on to talk about not, uh, you know, the um, the goetics um mm. and thinking about well actually a lot of contracts with demons and and other forms like that include the kind of um payment in bodily fluids now mm. depending whether or not that's a blood right or you know i know plenty of people that have gone down the the semen variety yeah. um in order to have that lasting contract and the, the you know, and knowing the the leftover of that, mm. um, the bit the bit that I found particularly interesting is um, they'd not considered about the um, kind of weak point, and maybe we'll pick this up again on the other side. But the 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 vulnerability that comes at that point, mm. so at point of orgasm or you know point of union there is a weakness that is being observed at that point a vulnerability that is there to be a um you know taken advantage of mm. which you know is my particular kind of variety of um sex magic is that is a point at which when i teach others about puppet work and mm. taking advantage of those moments of where someone's back is turned not literally Liam um but you know there is well, it that, could be. you that don't know of, you don't know the position do you you know but that that vulnerability that's there that that person at orgasm is open mm. um and not necessarily aware of which of their bodies they're in um mm. and therefore you know reaching in and taking a piece and and walking away um, is a big opportunity there. Um, it's also an opportunity for mixing on a level that is not often available to the um, uninitiated, as it were. So um, it was kind of talking about things like that they'd never given any thought to um, mm -hmm. because they none of them were experienced in sex magic. So if you're not observing with your other eyes at those points because you are separating that act from and putting it quite clearly in the mundane box mm. and not considering the massive potential of um, magical uses of that energy that is mm. available at that time or the kind of, um, for lack of a better word, sacred space that's kind of being created in a sexual union um that kind of blissful moments for a lot of people um all of that is a you know mistaken opportunity the the other part of kind of the flip side of that is celibacy mm. that kind of ritualized celibacy where that's what i bring to the table <laughs> you know 
which is which is what I talk to uh, talk to them about because they again they've not given any thought of that the idea mm. of giving up an orgasm as payment mm. had never crossed their mind like um or you know sex with other kinds of spirits mm. um we didn't get as far as talking about the subject we often talk about on here which is um about giving up your body in order for another possession. For yeah. possession work um i thought that might have blown their mind a little bit too much oh uh, well that's a fun one i think we know, have spoken about it before on the podcast though no and then the other one they really hadn't heard of um which helped one colleague that was there because they were kind of like oh yeah i've come across that term in a lot of my um Grim was, but I'd never actually mm. known what that was. So obviously he was a gay, he's a gay man. So what would he know about the seed of Lilith? But you know, <laughs> there, I obviously had to have a, 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 you know, a conversation about the mysteries of the female ejaculate. Um, mm. So it was kind of like, so yeah, so having that kind of conversations with them, I think was partially very <laughs> mind blowing. For some of them, which I think, if you're not going to go for mind blowing sex magic, what's the point? Mm. Well, I mean, it is a sort of explosive ritual, isn't it? You know, so yeah, yeah I felt like I felt like they learned a lot, <laughs> mm. um, and maybe they'll give some more thought to sex magic in the future. Maybe a workshop next time. No, I'm not sure. I'm prepared. Maybe I don't think I'm a strong enough stomach. Seed of Lilith for you and you and you. Everyone <laughs> gets Seed of Lilith in the eye. Here's a napkin. That's not the episode of uh, of Oprah I think I'd ever want to see. <laughs> it would be funny if there was, though. You get some oh. seed. You all get some seed. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, so it, it was it was good. I, I very much enjoyed it, um, particularly because it's a subject I like to talk about. Um, because I don't think it gets enough talk. Um, no, but is that just because people are prudish or yeah, I blame what? the Victorians. Is it that or is it that there's too many um uh solitary practitioners though these days? Yeah, but this is the thing. The whole concept of actually being able to raise energy on your own. And none of them are thinking. Yeah, they won't oh, think to do that, will they? They won't I'm... think to grab the wand and use that for magic. Do you know what I mean? I mean a fucking wand. <laughs> I don't know about I don't know about you, but the wand chooses the wizard, Harry. Um, oh. So I think it, it gets upgraded according to how baggy it gets. <laughs> <on it. laughs> Eventually, you're on main's power. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I just I um. I kind of just see see it as an important part of practice. <coughs> <coughs> oh, that was the seed of Lilith trying to come back up. Oh dear! It's when it gets halfway down your throat and just lodges there, isn't it? <laughs> oh. oh, but yeah. So I I thought it was it, I thought it was good. I think people learnt a lot. Um, but I just don't think it's part a big enough part of some people's practice. Um, Should we be setting more sex magic homework then for people? I don't know about that. I Should don't we know be if people. Are, witch wars? I don't know if people would be insulted. A sexy by time it. witch wars. <laughs> I don't know if it's appropriate to say to a man. Oh, I don't know. I mean, you know, they're big boys <laughs> and girls, aren't they? We might have to be an you know. 18 plus type <laughs> witch wars no one under the age of 18 i mean so, it would be fun wouldn't it we could do it know, for witch wars eight maybe um up, upgrade your bedroom tools i don't know well i was gonna say everyone get their keys like you get your um manifest yourself a um a crossroads key from a car tank <laughs> and then put it in the magical bowl and then we all draw a key out 